What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders Awakened and my complete start to finish progression playthrough. So we are about ready to head on over to Tornado Highlands. However, first things first, we've got some loot to go through and some points to apply after our last map. Let's get it done. So first things first, taking a look through the gear. This is what we've managed to collect so far. Uh, you see now I'm getting some purple items, some blue items. Of course, can't use those for quite a while. Level requirement 34. I'm not even halfway there yet, so I'm going to be sitting on some of these inventory items for quite a while as I play through. Just lock these items as your inventory. in your inventory. You're going to get a bunch of them, and that is going to allow you to have some gear to equip this second you get to the appropriate level. So currently right now I am level 16. Let's take a look through and see if we have any gear to put on. Now, one thing I was trying to do earlier was put together a set of gear. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and unequip all of these green pieces I got on and I'm going to check through and see if I have any sets ready to go quite yet. So let's go ahead and go through all the heroes here and pull all of this green gear off because we're going to really mix and match it a little bit and hopefully we're able to put together a complete set. So first things first, we're playing active on the Huntress. The Huntress is the most important to me right at the moment. So I want to make sure that I'm getting the Huntress decked out first. First thing I want to check is the weapon. We know we got this one on the very first map. Uh, we see even like this would be a weapon upgrade. However, I'm not ready to sink any more coin into it. I actually can't even use that piece yet, so that's not a factor anyway. But let's take a look through our armor. So if we go ahead and highlight all our armor pieces, we can look through each type of armor and see if we have a complete set yet. Uh, so we do not have a complete set available of ancient. Let's try guard. Chas no gloves there, so not a complete set there yet. How about Militia? All right, it looks like we have got a Militia set, but are we able to actually use it is the question. So let's see, let's put some items on. Let's go with uh, those gloves. We'll go with these boots. Power and range on the chest. Actually, I think I'll take that chest. And we actually don't have the set completed yet as we can't use that headpiece as its requirement is level 27. So let me go ahead and look through the other armor selections and see if there's anything else available. How about minor? See minor, we got boots, head, gloves, no chest that's usable quite yet. And how about primitive? Primitive, we have a chest, a head, gloves, but oh, we actually can use the boots. So we do get our very first armor set here. We're going to take a look through it here. Let's go ahead and go with, uh, see, we'll go with this pair of boots because it's got, what, three of the four builder stats we're looking for. No range on there. See, we got fortify range and defense rate. Fortify power and rate. Let's go with this fortify power and rate. How about these gloves? Just fortify and power there. There's some range for us. I think we'll just go with the fortify and power anyway. And then a headpiece. We got fortify and range. Fortify range and rate. Kind of mixed emotions on that one. I think I'm just going to take this fortify range and rate just to mix things up just a little bit more. And now as you see we're 4 of 4. We do have a complete set. So it's going to give us a 40% increase to the stats on the armor itself. So very nice, we've got ourselves our first full armor set, and let's just fly through the other characters, and we know we don't have any other full sets, so let's fly through the other characters and just equip anything we can. So on the Squire here, of course, we're looking for anything with the Fortify stat. Uh, we got some Fortify there. No Fort there, none. None, wow. No fort on this stuff. Holy crap, Ola. 
Let's see, we've got a chest there. All that really matters on this is the fort, since I'm using uh, nothing but walls. Now that piece is two fort, so that's a little bit better. Might as well start at the top and go backwards, right? So we need gloves and boots still. Let's see... Range, power... Can't equip those yet. There's some, some fortified gloves that we could use, but is there any that are any better? Actually doesn't look like it, so let's go ahead and equip those gloves. And then we just need some boots. Anything with fort on it is going to be GG. Wow, do I not have anything with fort on it? I just may not. That one's level 14. It's got one fort. We'll go ahead and throw that one in there. Uh, we'll take a look at our apprentice. Same thing there. Just going to go with the highest uh, item power stuff that I can equip. I uh, see we've got a lot of items that are we don't meet the level requirement quite yet. And just want as many builder stats as possible on these guys. Power and rate on that one, we'll take it. So we need what? Gloves and a head. There's power and range. Power and rate. Can't use those though. There we go, power, range, and rate. That seems like a nice piece. And then on the Monk. Rinse and repeat, same old stuff. As many builder stats as we can get. Let's just throw them on there. I'm not going to put a huge focus on it, though, as the stats are so small right now. It's just not making a massive, massive impact. So we got range, rate, power, and range. Let's go there. And then we just need a headpiece. Can't use that one yet. Looks like this is all we're going to have. So now we've got our gear all squared away for the next map. Let's take a look at our stats. Now on our Squire, who is the Waller, of course, all we care about is that Fortify stat. Let's just keep dumping points right into that. On the Huntress, we've got our stats kind of mixed as we want a little bit of range, but then we also want to go into everything else, Fortify, Power, and Rate. So I've got seven points. I think what I'll do is go... Let's go three points into power, and then we'll go two points into health, and two points into rate, just to get a little buffer there. Now on the Apprentice, all we care about is power, range, and rate. So what do we have now? We got 30 range. I think power and rate is where it's all about here. Let's go ahead and go four points. Was that five? Let's go, f yeah, let's go four points into power. And then we'll put the rest into defense rate to get that sped up just a little more. And then the monk, once again, we want an even spread. Uh, fortify power are, are going to be our main concerns right now, just for a little extra power and quality of life. However, we don't want to neglect the rate, so let's do the same thing. We'll go three points into power. We'll go two into fortify, and then we'll go two into rate, just to get a little bit more rate there. So now we are all set and we're ready to hop into our map and up next we have got the Tornado Highlands. Let's check it out. And here we go into the Tornado Highlands. This map is absolutely gorgeous, but I tell you, I cannot keep falling off the edges. Just keep from falling off the edges on these. These uh, drop-offs are extreme and all over the place, but man, I tell you, this map is just absolutely beautiful. They did an amazing job on this map. Now, if we take a look at our tactical map, we've got two cores, but boy, we have got a ton of entrances. So there's, what, one, two, three, four, five, six total entrances to two cores. However, we have a few little luxuries, so... Taking a look at it here, we've got one spawn coming in here. We're going to want to block this one off. We've got another spawn coming in right over here. We're going to want to block it. We've got yet another coming from right here. We want to block it. However, on this other lane, all of these remaining lanes, these all three of these lanes, come to this one choke point. So here would be a natural choice to block it off and make sure we're maximizing the amount of defenses we can have out there for the DU that's allowed. So let's go ahead and just go right in the darn middle of the bridge. We'll put two blockades there, uh, just following in suit with uh, the rest of the maps really. Just going to start off wave one with 
a little explosive trap action right there on top of the wall. Let's go ahead and block this one. Now, where do we want this one blocked at? I think maybe uh, right here is a safe bet. Now, I am going to get a little risky here, which I probably should not do, and just go with one wall in this area. Now, this is obviously going to allow any mob that wants to just to walk right around that wall. So I am going to have to keep an eye on things over on this side. But I just don't want to spend all the DU to get that blocked. Now, this particular lane, we got a real nice natural choke point just right here that allows us just to go with one wall. Uh, you can do it at several points, actually. You can do it right here. I uh, can't really get away with it there as much. Uh, or there, for that matter. I mean, if you wanted to completely spawn camp it, you could go right here, maybe. But that is just a touch on the risky side. So I think I'm going to come back here where the really safe blocking area is. Let's just go like right, say here, and we'll get an explosive trap once again at that wall to help us out just through wave one. Now we've got what? We've got three of the lanes covered, or is that just two? That's only two of the lanes, huh? See, we've got one right here. Actually, we did the big area too, so we've just got this area is all that's left. Now here we've got a few choices. Um, one of the tough things is, like, the closest choke point is probably going to be right here in this area. However, with it being on stairs like that, mobs can act a little bit funky around the stairs. So I think what I'll do is try to go to the bottom of the stair all the way down to avoid any sort of uh, unpleasant interaction on the stairs themselves. Uh, there is a little hole where they can walk around on the outside here, but... That's kind of against the grain as far as how the mobs are pathing. And then we'll get our one explosive trap down. And we should be GG for wave number one. But let's uh, try it out and see what we can do. We've got lots of DU left still, so we'll be able to build out some defenses on this map, no doubt. But we do still have a little ways to go. Quite a few mobs left. We're just going to have to let them uh, get into these traps, I believe. There we are. Now, just using that one wall here doesn't really seem to have caused any major issues, so I'm pretty happy with the result of that through wave one. Now, obviously, that's just wave one, so, you know, pretty hard to judge just off of that one wave. And then what do we got going on up here on the main choke? Now, I call this one the main choke just because three lanes converging into one. Uh, this is where the heavy duty action will be taking place, there's no doubt. Get this guy all burned up here. And then we should have just a few more mobs. It looks like we've got a little bit of a stuck mob issue on this map, which, you know, it's going to happen. We got some mobs that are just afraid to walk over the little rope bridge. Maybe they're just uh, uncomfortable with its construction, but they are not happy with making the pass over this bridge, that's for sure. And there we go. Wave 1 all wrapped up, and now we can build it out the rest of the way, the way we want to get it done. Now, we know that this is just a major, major choke. So here, I'm going to go ahead and throw down a Strength Drain Aura and an Electric Aura. I want to get both of those down just to get a little bit more AoE damage here. And then we're back to the good old mighty Flame Burst. Now, the Flame Burst is just such good stuff. Super early game. Now, the later you get in the game, the more options you're going to have. But really early, it's just really hard to beat the power of the Flame Burst as they are just absolutely incredible. What have we got left? We've got 40 D left. Let's go ahead and hit up this area. I think here we're just going to go just straight behind. I'm going to go ahead and throw two, two flame bursts down. Now, once again, we're not having anything here to remove that elemental immunity. So any mobs that are immune to fire, we're either going to have to kill manually or we're going to have to rely on our explosive trap to get it done uh, without putting a strength drain or a, or a darkness trap there. Now, what do we want to do here? We've only got 70 DU left. Here, we've got kind of this natural little pedestal, which seems 
to be honest, kind of like a no-brainer to build on it, but I don't have enough mana to get it done. So let's go ahead and just get our next wave moving along. I do want to make sure that these traps stay healthy, though. So let's get, uh, get repairs on all of those, just to make sure they're squared away. Better get this trap on the bridge, too, here. We do have the flame burst to help us out over on this lane now. And oh, the flame burst is mighty, the flame burst is mean. Now, the strength drain aura is removing those elemental immunities, so no mob can be resistant to my fire over in that area. But in addition to that, remember, it's removing the electric aura's elemental immunity. So if any enemies come out, they are immune to the electric damage, that strength drain is going to take care of them as well. But what really takes the strength drain over the top and makes it so incredibly powerful is it is also reducing the amount of damage the enemies are doing. So any ogre that comes over and starts smacking on these walls, that strength drain is going to reduce the amount of damage that they're putting out. Now we do have 30 D left to spend, which is quite generous really. And I think we'll head back over to this little platform. Uh, the reason I like this area here, uh, once again, is just because you basically get an area that's free of cleave damage. We shouldn't have any enemies cleaving this far over, so I'm just going to go with two flame bursts right there. And then we've got 20 DU left to spend in this main area, so let's go ahead and go with another two flame bursts. And then this area can, as you see, it's got a heavy amount of mobs, 50 goblins. Uh, 20 orcs, 10 archers, and 4 kobolds coming out. So here I'm going to go ahead and drop the same thing, which is a strength drain aura and an electric aura. And that's going to give me a little bit of additional damage here on this lane. That was so weird. I wonder why that electric aura showed up so tiny there for a second. And now all our DU is spent. I think uh, let's go ahead and just start upgrading over here. And I want to hopefully try to just avoid this side of the map altogether. So let's go ahead and let it fly. Uh, we're just on wave three now, so we got a ways to go until things get really hot and heavy here. But as you see, we do have 250 mobs, so... You know, the mob scaling is starting to ramp up. We're getting some a little bit heavier mob counts just on wave three and the 250. That's definitely a healthy group of enemies rolling out right when you're first just getting started in the game. This, of course, is our main choke. It's going to take a lot of damage here to burn through all these mobs. Having three lanes worth of mobs all converging on this one spot makes it so that we can stack all these defenses here quite effectively, but it's still just a lot of mobs to deal with, so you want to make sure you're keeping everything squared away here. We want to make sure this trap stays healthy and both of our R's as well. I do want to keep an eye on that lane over there, but I'm not super concerned about being right at that lane at the moment. Let's just keep burning it up here. Just about there, 13 mobs left, and they are uh, slow walking out. Of course, once we get into the higher difficulties and then Nightmare Mode, which is soon to come, these mobs will be moving a whole lot quicker, so... These maps will be going by really, really fast. Now, what I want to do at this point is upgrade the lanes that I'm not personally defending. So, I'm going to get some mana dumped right here. Let's go ahead and upgrade both of these flame bursts as well. Uh, we're going to do the same thing over here and on that large lane down below. You see, it was a little close call there. One more charge, and that uh, explosive trap would have been gone. Let's go ahead and hit both of those flame bursts as well. That gives us, what, almost 400? Actually, almost 600 left. Very, very nice. So let's just hit all the stuff and things over here to make sure this lane is going to stay good and fat. Let's hit, uh, oop, that was already upgraded once, but that's all right. That lane is in pretty good shape now. I've got 98 mana left to deal with any repairs over here. And actually, I think we'll be in pretty darn good shape. So let's get it started. 
Now we did upgrade all the other lanes, which means I want to focus on that main triple lane. I wanted to check that trap real quick since it was giving me uh, a funny reading on its health. Since this, uh, you know, essentially this is our weakest lane now. We don't have the upgrades in over here, plus we've got a ton of mobs. So with that in mind, this is where I want to be actually defending personally myself. And we should get these bad boys burned up. 348 mobs in wave 4, so we should get a nice bit of uh, builder mana to get some nice upgrades thrown around at the end of this wave here. Once again, I do want to just keep an eye out, uh, particularly down in that area. But your tactical map can be pretty effective as well to just let you know what's going on around the map as we get going here. But this will be the area that we want to defend. Uh, just kind of trying to just kite those Dark Elf Warriors over in front of the Flame Bursts. Ideally, inside of that trap in Electric Aura range as well. Just to make sure that they're dealt with and won't be an issue at all. So do we have enough for... we've got enough for an upgrade. Let's go ahead and throw one upgrade on that Electric Aura there. And then just 27 left, so we're burning them up pretty darn effectively here. How are we doing down on that lane? We're looking good over there. We took a little bit of wall damage, but nothing extreme. So I think we'll just let it fly here. And there we go. And we actually got a level up out of that. So that is just awesome. Let's go ahead and hit the rest of the upgrades we need here in this lane. And then from there, just go ahead and complete the cycle. So any lane that we don't plan on DPSing on is a lane that you're going to want to get upgraded. Now, I don't have a ton of mana left, so I'm actually going to skip that lane since it's the closest to where I will be defending. And let's get upgrades over on all these other lanes. Now, the Apprentice's Towers will get a very nice benefit out of upgrades as it's going to increase the power, the range, and the rate. And range is such a big deal early game that definitely you want to focus some of that mana into these Flame Burst Towers for sure. I got 286 left. What do we want to do? We can throw, uh, throw another upgrade there. That leaves me 86, which is pretty good, really, for repairs. So let me just get some repairs going here and make sure we are all repaired up and good to go. We got lots of loot on the ground. I'm not really sure how many greens. Hopefully we're getting a nice bit more uh, green loot down that's going to allow us, hopefully, to get full sets of green gear on all of our heroes. Now, I do want to double check my loot filter real quick. Yeah, we're still in great shape on the loot filter. It does get reset periodically, so every now and then you will want to take a look at that loot filter and make sure you're good to go. Now, we've got 469 mobs here in wave 5. This is definitely where it's at, though, so this is the place I'll be defending for this final wave. I do want to keep an eye out for ogres anywhere, though. I believe the ogres are going to come here. If we have any, we'll see. Tornado Valley, of course, doesn't have ogres, but if I remember correctly, I think Tornado Highlands does. We'll have to... Yeah, there's the our first ogre rolling out over there now, so we definitely do have ogres for sure. I actually want to try to see if maybe I can uh, soak up that ogre snot ball and hopefully get him to not throw it. Oh, wow. <laughs> the, uh, the range on that bad boy is a little bit extreme, there's no doubt. Stay away from the ogre boogies. They are bad news. Let's get this trap upgraded before that ogre gets here. And uh, I guess I'm just going to kick back now and keep my walls and tower repaired here. Let me make sure we don't have another ogre anywhere. It doesn't look like we do. But I want to keep an eye on the health of all these defenses. Uh, those ogre snot balls are just got such a huge AoE range. Definitely want to stay out of that, as you saw by the one shot there earlier. We're getting it done, though. 
We are indeed getting the job done. Straight drain is at about half now, but we're so low in the wave, I'm not even going to bother repairing or upgrading. We just don't need to. It's going to survive the rest without any issue. Down below 40 now, so just about there. The Ogre, you see, just kind of made light work of it. Having a trap, an Aura set, and multiple flame bursts, it's just going to burn up these early game Ogres. There's just no doubt there. Hopefully this is going to be enough to get me to 18. We'll see here. I got a ways to go. Oh, it did. It got us all the way through 18, and it looks like a little bit more than a quarter of the way uh, up to 19. So we should be at level 20 maybe by the end of the next map. And there is another blue piece. So we are definitely collecting the loot. We're going to be in good shape once we get high enough level to get this stuff equipped. Now that will do it for now. Thanks an absolute ton for watching. Make sure you click that like button. Please subscribe to the channel. I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders in all its forms. So thanks again, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.